Warning, the following show contains conservative posturing, radical Christian ideas, and may offend pagans, Wiccans, Islamic fundamentalists, and other unenlightened individuals. Callers and guests may be subjected to brash and offensive comments by the hosts and any other type of bullying tactics available. But that's okay. We know why you're here. This concludes this test of the emergency broadcast system. Tonight is Monday, June 23rd, 2008. What's up? Oh, you did woe too. This is Jay Scott, your only JD DJ on Omni Sound. And sitting to my far right tonight for a change of scenery, Mr. Chuck Browder. How That's you doing, right. Chuck? I'm doing all right. We're, uh, Chuck's... I hope the listeners are doing all right tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they are. Chuck's filling in for Mr. Trent C. Lackey. Um, Trent's having some um, issues that he had to be away from tonight, so we all wish him the best. Of luck. Tonight's show is going to be something um, extremely different. And we've got guests again, isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> um, our first guest is uh, Frederick Slack. We had him on last week for a little while. Um, and we're going to have him on the first hour tonight. And we're going to talk about visions of the future, uh, prophecies, um, all those types of things, and, and what's, what's, what to expect um, in the future. Yeah, good stuff. No, that is very good stuff. And then, you know, we we, we never know what the the future might hold, Jay Scott. Of course, <laughs> but of course. Um, and then the second hour, we're going to be speaking with Roland Deese um, in Florida. He owns a company um, that sells spirits and bottles. Is that right? That's right. Oh, we we've discussed this before. <laughs> I think it's a class action lawsuit waiting to happen myself, but I don't know, man. That's going to be hard. I'll have to ask him. We should ask him. <laughs> but um, anyway, have you been sued lately? <coughs> Excuse me, I've, I've sued lately. Oh. <laughs> That's awful, isn't it? Anyway, um, <laughs> the number toll free is one eight seven seven scare you two. That number is eight seven 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 two two seven three eight two, or locally three three six nine nine six one five. Nine six. I saw the movie One Missed Call last night. Out in the theater? Is, 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 oh, okay, no, it's on, on Blu-ray. Blu-ray. And it was uh, I'm really not familiar good. with the film. What, 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 what is the context? Well, it's, it's just about, you know, you miss a call and then you die. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> sorry, my bronchitis is still there for those of you that can hear it. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll speak more about it later because right now we've got Mr. Frederick Slack on the line. Frederick, how you doing tonight? Just wonderful. How are you, gentlemen? We're doing great. Awesome, man, awesome. <clears throat> now, now, Frederick, you, you hold a degree in biology and mechanical engineering from uh, University of Akron. That's correct. And um, you functioned as a senior VP for a top 300 international engineering firm and president and CEO of one of the country's largest hazardous waste disposal and recycling firms. That's, that's quite also a resume. Correct. Yes, sir. <laughs> and, and now you own a privately held uh, environmental consulting firm, with enge- professional engineers um, in over 28 states in D.C.? Yes, sir. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> it, it keeps me off the, off the streets. You know. I understand. I understand. <laughs> now, now, you know, I've got a little outline here um, that we, you know, to kind of give some talking points that you sent me that, I, that I've been looking at. And I want to kind of dive into some of that if that's all right. Oh, that's fine. And any place you'd like. We'll just start at the beginning, these visions of the future. When did when did you start getting these visions, and how did they come to you? Well, probably back in the mid '90s, Jay is is when I first started receiving them. And at first, they weren't. I didn't classify them as visions. They felt more like a nightmare, quite honestly, because you would be awakened from a dream and a, and a cold sweat from what you had just visioned or, or had experienced in a dream form. And the first one you kind of brush off, and, and then they keep happening and, and happen from different angles, different points of view, different parts of the country, different parts of the world. And you start to put it all together as this is something that, you know, I better start keeping track of, and perhaps there's something else I need to do with this. 
No, are the are you seeing are a lot of these recurring visions? I mean, are you seeing the exact same uh, thing play out each time in, in a number of these? Somewhat recurring, but but different from various uh, geographical points, if you will. Uh, where I've had them from Ohio, Florida, Colorado, the Caribbean, California, the East Coast, Wall Highlands, uh, virtually all over the world. Uh, well, well, I guess where I would be in my dream. I guess, I guess what and, I'm asking is: is if have you revisited the same place twice and seen pretty much exactly the same thing? Uh, in in a few, in a few of the the local ones, when I'm at a place for a while, I, I've had recurring. Yes. Okay. But I, th- I think in this day and age, you'll find that there's probably a good number of people out there that have had similar dreams and probably are, you know, brush them off, don't talk about them, or are afraid to express them, and, and just out of curi- curiosity. And I, I don't know you fellows personally, but have any of you had any dreams? Uh, yeah, just the Antichrist stuff, but other than that, <laughs> and I'm serious. Well, no, I don't, that's a pretty good point, actually, because I, if if I remember correctly, that there were actually people that that had, had dreams for seeing the, the events of September 11th before September 11th, and they have them documented in, in jur- journals with psychiatrists and and other. Have, have you heard uh, this really? as well, Frederick? Yes, uh, yes that, I have. I, I, what, what do you think accounts for this phenomenon? Well, I think, quite honestly, and, and getting into it uh, deeply within my beliefs, is that they are visions that are presented to us uh, almost as gifts that we're to react to, either in some form of preparation or in some form of encouraging others to prepare. Well, uh, do you think it could possibly be a, a ma- manifestation of, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, maybe hum- humanity's collective unconsciousness, or um, I-, I-, I don't know. I-, I-, I guess a number of other other possibilities. Well, not being a psychiatrist myself, I, I-, I can't pinpoint that exactly. No, but I-, 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 I honestly believe that uh, these are sent to us uh, in some fashion. Certainly, there there are those dreams that you that you get after watching a scary movie of some type. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I guess my are, my question is how would how do you set these aside and say well this is a vision versus this is a, just a, a nightmare that I'm having? I think the the continuity of the event that takes place tied with the the vision itself and the re, the reality of the vision and the clarity of the vision. Uh, certainly separates it from a normal dream. Okay, fair enough. So, do do you think that there there's potentially, um, I, I guess, uh, an intelligent design or an intelligence behind the, these gifts, as you call them? I, I believe there has to be, uh, without a doubt, and be, because in my mind, it, it's not if but when. <laughs> Uh, something like this will occur. It, uh, these type of events have have happened in the, the past in, in the history of the Earth, and are certainly destined to to happen again. Well, what, what what type of, of events are you are you referring to? Well, we're talking about uh, cataclysmic type type events. Is that, is that what? Ab- absolutely. Okay. A- absolutely. Well, did did you life, definitely life changing? Okay. Uh, well, the, the the tsunami recently, I guess, in two, was it two thousand four, and uh, Hurricane Katrina in two thousand five. Did Did you have any precognition of either of those events? No, sir, I did not. Okay, I'm just curious. <laughs> um, and, uh, and none on the nine eleven either. Have you had right. ha- any which have come to fruition since you've been having these visions, and how long have you been having them? I've been having them uh, again since the mid nineties. Mm-hmm. Um. And fortunately, they have not. At least, let me take a peek out the window. No, they haven't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I have had a feeling since the time of, of my first thoughts of a child that I was living in the end times. That may or may not play into it. That may be something that was inbred into me uh, bio- biologically or... <coughs> from God knows where, 
But you, you do, no, you, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah. um, you do but, believe that these are these are uh, somehow linked to to a second return of Christ, maybe. Very probable. Okay. Okay. Now, I, I noticed in, in in the outline you gave me that you you have a uh, past visions and prophecies of others, Nostradamus, George Washington, Revelation. And and those go on and on. And besides Revelation, I, the Lady of Thanaba, Edgar, Edgar Casey. Uh, you look at the Mayan Indians. Uh, numerous tribes have all had predictions of of the end, end of the earth. Um, and I'm not saying the end of the earth, but the end of the earth as we know it. Uh, you just you just think it's going to. What I would a... like you to do is, is to step into one of these visions. Okay. Uh, if you will. Sure. Um, travel in your mind to 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 picture that you're standing there on a on a normal day, enjoying the uh, your your family life or or your friends around you, and all of a sudden you have a tremendous urgency to to turn around and look, and we've all had that feeling, and you can't control it, and even though you try to, and, and you turn and look, and it looks like the 4th of July, off in the distance. And you say, wait, it's, it's not the 4th of July. What's, what's going on? And you see these bright lights streaking across this, the sky like fireworks. And all of a sudden, they're exploding, and, and things are beginning to happen around you. And, and uh, you can visually see shock waves. Uh, I've never done that, but in my visions, you can actually see them uh, as they move toward you, and you can feel the blast as, as it presses against your chest. Um, at at that moment in the visions, you know, I begin reverting back to my military days of shouting orders and telling people to take cover and go into houses, and which is probably one of the worst things they can do. But... Uh, in in the visions, that's that's what I end up doing, but to seek shelter and get out of the way because you you sense you know that it is something that is out of the realm of norm and and should not be happening. Now you know I did have a I I don't consider a vision really a dream. I don't know what I would call it. I'd call it a dream, well, not really a dream, a nightmare. Um, basically a. a I guess this was a year or two ago, and I remember sitting on a, you know, the old picnic benches that you have outside, the old one-piece ones made out of wood? Certainly. Okay. I remember sitting on one of those with a couple friends of mine, and it being, you know, twilight. And then all of a sudden, uh, all of these meteorites, basically chunks of fiery rock started falling from the sky. And, you know, everybody's trying to find cover all at once. That, that's the the weirdest and creepiest thing that I can say that I, I sensed and tied somewhere in my mind had tied to a to an end times type of uh, association. I don't know why I felt that way during the uh, vision or dream or nightmare, but uh, that stuck with me pretty hard. I don't know if that ties it, into to anything. It, it certainly does. It, it's it's uh, very much in line with the, the type of visions that I and, and other people have, have had that I have discussed this with. Um, it, it's it's very much like the beginning of, of what you what you see, and when I have had them from different areas or different parts of the geography, if you will, uh, they end in different ways, uh, depending upon where I am. Um, they will end as if I'm drowning, and then I will wake up. They will end as if I'm being totally consumed and cannot breathe, and then I wake up. And in those, I, I assume that I am dying because of my location. Uh, in other locations, uh, if I'm in the Lowell Highlands or if I'm in, in certain other areas, and I'm not trying to name one area better than, than another, but... Uh, or the Colorados or wherever, uh, where I continue after the event to help others survive and to start giving guidance or doing my portion of what I can. Uh, obviously, that is a better plan than, and I can see from those visions than of what type of structure it would take to survive and 
what happens afterwards. And, and one of the things I would like to do is, is for your listeners, is, is if there is anybody out there who has had visions, by all means, feel free to either drop me an email or certainly call in and, and tell us about it. Oh, and that, that's right. You, you can uh, give us a call here at 877-722-7382. That's 877-SCARE-YOU-2. Uh, you can drop us a line, too, at worldoftheunexplained at gmail.com. Some people are checking that periodically. Definitely would uh, appreciate to be, I guess, more anonymous about it. Sure. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we, we can relay it over to, uh, to Frederick uh, Slack for you if, you, if you'd like. I've got a question for you, Frederick. Um, it, your your visions take you to different geological or ge- excuse me not geological geographic locations. Um, do, do they take you to different uh, periods in time too? And is it always forward? No, they're they're normally in the time frame that I'm at, or so, at times so, I, th- I thought they've been somewhat in the past. By the past, I say perhaps when my children were younger. But I realized further into the dream that. The children I thought were mine were actually somebody else's. So, so the the the, the visions so t- I, I take believe place them all to be uh, present time. They're they're basically contemporary for all intents and right, and purposes. Right. Okay, okay. Uh, I was just wondering because you you brought up the the, the Mayans um, and you know the the 2012 uh, calendar. I'm sure you're familiar with it. Uh, sure I was just, I was wondering if any of them managed to extend past 2012. But I guess I guess if they're they're set in the the present, then. Uh, that, that's certainly not I, the case. I would not dare to, to put a time <laughs> schedule or date on an event like this. Um, you know, there, there's the scientific viewpoint, uh, there's a vision view, viewpoint, and then there's a Hollywood viewpoint uh, of, of the different things we can do. We've all seen the, the various movies. Uh, Deep Impact and... and uh, um, Armageddon. Armageddon, exactly. <laughs> how, how we're going to uh, attack them with nuclear weapons and blow them apart. We'll send Bruce Willis up there in the uh, NASA Knock shuttle. Knock them off their course. <laughs> and they, they don't hit us. And, and in reality, that's, that is not what's going to happen. I mean, NASA has done massive research into uh, that type of scenario. And if we were to do something like that, Yes, we might fracture it. We might uh, put it in into multiple pieces. But the gravity of of the meteorite itself, or the asteroid itself, would tend to pull it back together and hold it together until it hit our own atmosphere. In which your vision of multiple items come raining down upon the Earth would make sense. Hmm. Now, what, what, what's a, what, what are the good safe areas, Frederick, according to your visions? There again, I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be a fabulous day in San Diego. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, the only thing I can tell you about that is is where I have been in my visions or dreams and what happened to me. Uh if I were on the West Coast, per se, uh, be it north or south, any part of California, uh, Canada, Mexico, along that that corridor, I did not awaken from that dream help, helping people. I, I woke up having difficult a difficult time breathing. I was either drowning, being uh, uh, flooded, or you know bombarded in some fashion and uh, certainly in pain uh, and knew that it was the, the end of time. The same for being in the Caribbean and, and on the Florida coast. Uh, other places, again, I survived. Yeah. What, what, what about North Carolina? You've been here? <laughs> <laughs> I'll reserve that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Wonderful. I, I didn't at know, least until after a break. Yeah. Well, I, I, that sounds good. Um, and I didn't know if Ron Paul uh, Hunter, your, your co-author in this new book that you guys have, uh, have been working on together, I didn't know if he, uh, if you're in his visions, basically crossed the same, uh, same ground with the same kind of results. Or if they ever met each other, and then that'd be even more interesting, wouldn't it? Well, I'm, I'm sure that didn't happen. <laughs> but uh, hang, 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 tight with us, hang tight with us, Frederick. We're going to take our first break of the night, and we'll be back in a little bit. 
You guys are listening to Worldly Unexplained. Please call in 877 scare you 2 We'll be back in just a minute after this. And we're back on the... Th- <laughs> the world almost of, did it. Almost world did of it. the unexplained. I almost did it, man. That's uh, all right. I've done it on the other side. So. I know. Well, this is my... I still, I didn't do it. I stopped <laughs> myself. I'm just... It's just odd being in here with you on the other microphone and it not being in the other show. So that's, that's, what, <laughs> that's what bothers me. Ugh. Anyway, we're back. World of the Unexplained. Tonight, our guest is Frederick Slack. Now, uh, Sl- Frederick, w- tell us where, where the best website is to, to get information about you and this, this idea. Certainly. Um, the, the site that we have up currently is civilizationcontinuity.org. Civilizationcontinuity.org. And that's Ron Paul Hunter's site as well? Yes, sir. Okay, great. And uh, we, when- We'll be putting up a, a new site uh, relatively soon with regard to the uh, upcoming publication. Awesome. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Very cool. Now, I want, I want to get back to that North Carolina thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, you know, we started this country a little over 200 years ago with the shot heard around the world. And everybody's familiar with that. And And what we're trying to do is prepare people for the impact that's going to be heard around the universe. Now... As far as uh, as far as structural things that may be able to withstand this, uh, you know, you hear these theories about these geodesic domes that people build and things like the the underground uh, the underground like uh, a nuclear bunker yeah, or something shelters, like that. Uh, any of Lead these line things, box. Yeah, or, or any of these <laughs> things. Uh, something that someone might think about getting into? The structure will have to be different depending upon their lo- location, of course, and we're going to be diving into that quite heavily in, in our second edition, uh, which will follow the first. But you have to uh, envision uh, that when something like this occurs, when an impact like this occurs, that communications are, are immediately gone. You know, you're not going to be able to turn on television and watch the evening news or use your, your cell phone or, or regular landline. They're just not going to be there. And for a period of time, you know, unfortunately, you guys will be out of a job. The radio won't be there. Yeah, true. Um, transportation will be gone. Our infrastructure will be gone or collapsed. Uh, we'll have no ability to produce or generate food. Now, uh, is this due to an EM pulse that, that this thing will send out or...? Or uh, what exactly is the this cause? It's going of it? to be a, a combination of, of, of efforts uh, put on by uh, the man upstairs, uh, where you not only have the blast causing a tsunami, uh, causing the impact, causing uh, a shifting of, of the, the, the Earth's plates. Uh, tornadoes, hurricane velocity type winds, an onslaught of, of gases replacing oxygen. Uh, so depending upon where you are in relationship to where the impact occurs, and we believe we've pinpointed where that will be, that's not a fact uh, per se, but we think we have it down fairly well, uh, which is another reason why if people have had the, these visions or dreams, please email them in to you fellows, uh, and I would personally like to contact them if they're so willing to interview them so that we can document all these and, and put them into a scientific order uh, to to line them up with, with the others that we have collected. Now, now, can they email you directly? They certainly can. And I can give you an email for that, and that would be simply fhslack at gmail dot com. Okay. Very good, very good. Now they can also email uh, your co-author Ron Paul Hunter at rp hunter at civilizationcontinuity dot org, and uh, that's who we have on the line. Um, do you think that Obama can save the world, Ron Paul? <laughs> of course he can. He's he's Jesus Christ. Okay, now let's doing that. Hello, hello, Ron. How you doing tonight, Frederick? Oh, very good, thank you. How are you guys doing, Jay? Are you guys all right? Oh, we're doing awesome, great. Ron. Awesome. How how you doing, man? And since we're we're all uh, asking how we're doing here. Yeah, I'm doing fine, man. I, I feel great. Everything's beautiful here. 
Look, the, um, the thing about Frederick and Frederick's vision, I, I guess I should have come in and maybe helped out a little bit with the introduction, is Frederick has a series of visions that are located all over the country, and I had been on the Internet way back when he first started having these visions. We didn't correspond directly, but there was a time when he put his visions up on the Internet, I put my visions up on the Internet, a, a bunch of people did, and there was a lot of behind-the-scenes correspondence. So it, it was from these correspondences and these postings that we were able to get the scenario that we're developing. Everything that Frederick just went over is pretty much the scenario. It, it impacts science. And, and what we're, I guess, if we're going to try to tie this all together is our visions, are, what we believe is, is that they are, uh, they're part of um, our religion, Christianity, and that uh, this is tied into Revelations. And the reason we would be given visions like this in, in, um, in addition, not really in addition to Revelations, but to clarify points of it, like where exactly are some of the impact sites from these events, is because it's such a huge magnitude that, you know, God won't abandon his church. He won't abandon his children here in America. But he has to have some way of showing you that, uh, and this is just from my personal story. Before I had this vision, I read Revelation, and I look at it, and I'm like, well, the sky rolls up, and, and some asteroid pieces fall to earth it doesn't look that bad you know the a, a river dries up and a arm it doesn't look that up. bad three-fourths of the of the world destroyed <laughs> i mean <Okay. laughs> but what, what does that leave remember we've talked about this plenty of times before jay it's um we got 300 million people here there's six six billion people on earth so even if if Oh, there's only 2 billion people left. That's 2,000 million, of which only 300 million are Americans, if we don't lose anybody. Uh, the, the bad part is, unfortunately, from what we have seen in our visions, it looks a lot like there's going to be impacts that are hitting pretty much hemispherically. Smaller impacts, not as big as the one that we see to be the impact of Revelations, are hitting hemispherically all across the globe. And then there's this one large impact. The large impact is what we're concentrating on, because this is what is going to draw all of humanity together. It's of such an extensive magnitude that it's going to affect every single place on Earth. And nope. what we do, how we think about it as sane, sober, rational Christian adults, is what the book is really all about. It's where, about where is the where is this large impact? Where do you guys have you have you guys figured an area? Uh, Frederick, do you want to hit that one? Gulf of Gulf of Alaska, uh, south of the of the Aleutian Islands. Right. It's okay. about four kilometers of depth. It looks to be a low-angle impact, and this will all be covered in the book. I, I personally have had a vision from North Carolina that I saw the large impactor flying by in the atmosphere. It's so detailed, and I, I was able to remember so much of it. And when I go back and think about it, I can start to pull the details out. I can almost count the flight time through the atmosphere. So as a vision, it was terrifying. But as a person trained in geology, remember, Frederick is trained as an engineer. What was your original specialty, Frederick? It was like powdered uh, molecular engineering or powdered uh, metals. Oh, I didn't realize, Frederick, that, that you're, you are a geologist? Uh, no, sir, I am, I am okay. not a geologist. Oh, you're I'm not. I'm actually trained geologist. I was taking geology in NC State. So I'm, I'm not a geologist. I never have taken the certification, but I've got a lot of college credit hours in geology. I guess I've got enough to say I, I could have a minor in geology if I wanted to. Type I, I am not a geologist, but I do have them working for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. The, the thing is, we can analyze this science. The more visions that we have that fit into this scenario, we're basically extracting the details just like they are science so that we can go forward and say, you know, and, and part of my pitch is that I talk with Frederick all the time about is this um, impact scenario is just another part of our religion, Christianity. It's not... And, and let me clarify that, too, is that we're not trying to prove every vision and dream that we hear. Uh, the first at least from my viewpoint, the, the first thing we try to do is, is to actually debunk it, if, if you will. What can we remove from here? And then what can be pulled as factual and scientific? Okay. Mm -hmm. And overall, from all of the different visions that you guys have, not only that you've had, but others have had that match up, you, you have a pretty, pretty well-rounded picture at this point. Enough that we can put it in chart and graph form that uh, people will readily understand uh, w once they see it. Right. What we're trying to do is remove a lot of gray area. And I know some of your guests have come on, and I've argued with some of them before about how they interpret the Bible and the things they talk about. 
I mean, Frederick and I feel very strongly this is um, something that was built into Christianity. Jesus refers to it directly. Remember, we go to the feed my sheep thing. That's basically the, the revolving points of the book are, here is this imagery from Revelation. A lot of people have had very stark visions that have woken them up in cold sweats. I have seen where people have posted, and I've read their, their correspondence, and they've actually moved from one place to another, and a major deciding factor in moving was the fact that they had these visions about where they lived getting destroyed in a blast wave or a tsunami, and they're, they're, it's like it's such a detailed vision. Well, how do they know wh- where they're moving to is any safer than where they're moving from? Mainly they don't, and that's a lot of why we're going into this. This is, um, it's almost, if you were to look at it without religion, you could say the event that we're seeing looks like a survival bottleneck. But when you put Christianity back on top of it, you can realize that Jesus prepared us for this just like everything else in life. He said, feed my And remember, it's, it's, as I said before, it's not if, but when. And that, that brings the point, poignant question of who will survive. And that is an obvious answer, and that is those, I'm gonna ask that, are, you. Per, per, those that are prepared. I've got to ask you, um, it, it sounds like it's, it's uh, faith-based, similar to what Ron's proposed here before, uh, uh, using the, the faith-based initiative funds, which have been set aside, and to my knowledge, uh, have not been spent in the seven and a half years Bush has been in the, in, in, uh, the executive branch. But uh, to, to funnel that through the, the churches, I, I guess, to create a, a local civil defense plan, do you share this, this view, Frederick? Well, definitely, what, because what happens after? Uh, we will need some form of uh, government in, involvement. And as I've mentioned to you in the past, uh, you know, Limited. my personal belief is the less government, government the better. However, we are going to need a structured body to get us through this. It's going to be a three, uh, three-prong approach. You're going to need uh, the government's involvement. You're going to need a, a grassroots involvement. And you're going to need a set civil defense program that will partially be molded after the fact. Well, uh, th- does, is, this, is this exclusively, I guess, a, a Christian uh, effort as well? Does this incorporate other religions, atheists, uh, agnostics as well? It includes anybody who's breathing. Okay, I got you. Is, well, that, is that Chuck? Yes, yes, it is. How are you doing, Ron? I'm doing fine, Chuck. You know, I mean, that's sort of a tricky question because obviously there's a, this is a, a, not a Christian nation. It's a nation that's predominantly or the population is predominantly Christian. So if you're going to have any government involvement, of course, it can't be a Christian program. What we're looking for, and to do this, to really think about where we're coming from, all you have to really do is look into history. Remember the alphabet soup days of the Great Depression, the CCC and the other um, alphabet soup organizations? Those were put in place with military organization, and they allow people who didn't have work in a community to assemble, to go to a remote area, and to do public works projects. So our civil defense, my civil defense concepts that I'm working on with Frederick right now are very much in line with those ideas. That does several things, and the government was very clever in doing this. They remove stress off of a population that's already trying to live together and allow the people that are extra in that community to go somewhere and produce a a product for the nation. Now, you, you count on people in their Christianity to stick together congregationally. So what we're talking about is not just enabling people to go away from a town, relieve the stress on the town, bring revenue in, but what we're talking about is a massive food storage program that is going to cover the whole board across the country, not just Christians, but every religion, not just some people, but all the citizens is what I'm pushing, because that enables us to use this government organizational technique to allow the congregations to take their natural place, which is a place of refuge. It's a place of survival. That's what, uh, that's what congregations used to be from back in the days when people persecuted Christianity. You had to run. You had to be ready to hide. You had to be ready to greet your Christian brothers with a secret sign. But the key to avoiding the danger was always one thing. If anything ever happens and you think these scenarios are about to take place, you must immediately assemble with your church, with your family, or with your public school and then decide what to do. If you try to do this on your own, you'll be wiped out. This is not the type of thing that you go into lightly. And Christ told us, you know, it will be a, a, a tribulation so strong that if it weren't foreshortened, even the people that he's prepared would be wiped off the face of the earth. So God's hand is on this. God hand, God's hand has to be on you. His blessing is is something we enjoy now. And, and this is a sermon sort of that I'm working on, but God has blessed America. It's up to us to take, then it's like payment. Like, God has put a big 
pile of gold, a bag full of gold in front of every last one of us. That bag full of gold is clean drinking water. It's air conditioning. It's a car. Have you ever thought about a car? Have you ever heard this line from the Bible? He will lift up your feet and make the pathway straight before you. I think about that every single day I get in a car because I realize when I'm getting in a car, I'm literally lifting up my feet and going onto a pathway that's been made straight before me. That's a biblical passage from the ancient days come to life right in our time that we're using every day, and yet almost everybody takes it for granted. So I'm trying to get people to snap out of their complacency and realize putting pressure on the government to store food Uh, is our responsibility. that, that, That could be a horse, Ron. Well, anyway, <laughs> D just pointed that out to me. I, I was like, oh, that, that, that is something. And he's well, like, the horses don't ride on ways that are made straight before them. Have you? I mean, there's not too many laser leveled, um, you know, multi layer asphalt and concrete roads that horses use. They were. In this day and age, a Vespa would be the, better. Yeah. The, the, the Romans didn't make yeah, roads. Okay. So. And, anyway, Chuck, I think Chuck had something for you. Oh, um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, there, there's, I guess, a, a, a rumor going around, uh, Ron, that. You've you've had um, I guess visions about an Obama presidency, a landslide, no aid. That was me. Weak on this because I beat you up so much on the Christianity <laughs> theory of Obama. Yeah, I'm still predicting landslide Obama. What? And here's what I think. Is well, the- you might be right because I saw a poll today that that had him up by some ridiculous like 18 percent or something nationally. It was it was only one poll though. Politics. Chuck, they hate the politics. They hate the fact that people have gone into North Carolina and have started, remember I told you my mom got this rumor, which really pissed me off, started talking about how um, Senator Obama was going to start some Islamic um, cleansing and purification where everybody who wasn't Islamic was going to get you. Right, right. Like he's some sort of closet al-Qaeda that's going to sneak into the White House. Uh, I heard he had a white love child somewhere in Georgia. (laughs) Now you're just just starting smack here on Woo 2. You guys better watch out or it's going to be like that Chuck Norris commercial. (laughs) (laughs) His acolytes here in North Carolina. No, no, but seriously, I did have something about the Obama, just Obama in general, I did want to ask you is that on civilizationcontinuity.org, from what I saw, it looked like you th- you believed that his presidency, if he became president, would support your uh, your bill or, or your, I guess, your idea for a faith-based... I it will. Jimmy, okay. But it was written, my civilizationcontinuity.org site was written for uh, President Bush. It was written for the current administration to, to explain my ideas to them and hope that they would endorse it wholeheartedly. And I think because of the war, they weren't able to ever pl- place any attention to it or take it very seriously. And, and that's just a, um, a simple matter of government resources only going so far. Our government can really only do one or two things well at the same time with the amount of people it's got because the draft isn't there. Right. Frederick, were you drafted? Certainly was. Okay, <laughs> and I'm, I hate that I'm sitting here blabbing away on on your uh, <laughs> interview. I, I guess what I wanted to say was that's the book context. Is is we want to say something saying about Revelation. We want to get to the feed my sheep conclusion. But as for the visions that people have sent in, Frederick's are by far the most startling. He, he has the the imagery that brings out what it's like to be staring at a hypersonic uh, shockwave from a large Im- impact coming straight at you. It's so scientific and so accurate. It'll knock your socks off. So it's, it's my understanding, too, that, that you're not Literally. killed, Frederick, in, in each of these, these visions, right? That, that sometimes you, you, you survive them? There are times I survive. There are times I don't. It's circumstantial compared to the magnitude and intensity of the event. In other words, he has a vision where he's standing on the beach. An object comes by. He gets blasted by the hypersonic shock wave, and then another hypersonic shock wave lifts up a, what is effectively a very small surface tsunami, would look like a ripple on a pond if you were if you were giant, like eight or 900 feet tall, but that little ripple ends up being a tidal wave 20 feet high that comes zooming right over him and drowns him. It's that kind of stuff. It, it reduces humanity to minuscule specks on what otherwise we've all seen. Like, if you've ever taken a large rock and thrown it into a, a pond and watched or into a pool and watched the waves slosh back and forth and slosh over the side, that's effectively what's happening. Except instead of you being the big guy with the rock, you're the little guy on the edge of the pond. And if the wave... You're the grain of sand. Right. It'd be, it's a 900-foot-tall wave in some places. So how do you survive that? You don't. I and mean, God's given me visions about that, too, where I remember the tornado vision where I'm trying to get people out of the house, and then the house gets destroyed, and Jesus shows up, and there's this big shaft of light. I've read tsunami visions like that. The guys see the tsunami coming. They're trying to get away, and all they say is then, then everything became peaceful. 
and they saw this shaft of light, and they went to the light and swam up, and they were standing in the presence of God. So, you know, Frederick sees a lot where the blast wave passage isn't so severe that it instantly kills all human life. But remember, this is the start of at least a five-year period of tribulation. It could be as long. I'm putting it in about the seven and a half overall. But it could be 10 to 15 years that we are going to effectively be on our own <coughs> in, a, in a ruined ecosystem. And we've got to remember the principal foundational commandment of Christianity was, you know, you love God with all your heart, but what did God ask you to do? He asked Peter to And, and you have to remember that, that once this impact hits, that your, your one and only goal is survival at that point. Uh, and you have to start pulling together as a community and, and wherever you are, whatever that community is, and pulling from the strengths. By that, we mean Christian survival. We, we, what we advocate is using the, the foundational concepts of Christianity to draw a community together before the event, to allow people to practice living as they would live in a certain extent, and to hopefully get the federal government to participate in this at some level. It's, it's not against the law. It's about crafting it in such a way that it fits into the system and that it does the job. And I think it's totally possible. But, All right. Well, um, well guys, I, I hate to do this to you, especially you, Frederick, because we didn't really give give you much of a chance, but we're, we've run out of time for this. It's hard segment. to get a, get a word in edgewise here sometimes. <laughs> we would, uh, you know, if you want to mention your website again, we, we've, we're just going to have to move on, though we've got another guest scheduled for the next hour. Or, or are there uh, any appearances or uh, any other uh, promotions you guys are doing here in the next? Uh, we will have announcements coming, and when we do, we will shoot them to you. Awesome. Uh, the website, again, is civil, civilizationcontinuity.org. And I can be reached at fhslack at gmail.com. Awesome. I do have a special email up, which is uh, civilizationcontinuity.org, but the, the first part of it is visions, V-I-S-I-O-N-S, which is a separate email account just for people to send in visions. So if you wanted to send it to visions at civilizationcontinuity.org, I'll get it in there. Of course, you can always contact Jay or Chuck or Trent if he ever shows up and <laughs> send them an email in. And um, we'll get a hold of it. He, he's under the weather tonight, man. So don't give him, don't don't bust bust his uh, right, cojones yeah, too hard there, man. Feel better. Yeah, I hope he feels better. I know what it's like to feel terrible, and it's you want it to pass. So. Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Thanks so much, guys. We appreciate it. We'll have you back on soon. Thank you very much, Frederick. Thank you, Ron. Thank you very much. All right, and that was Ron Paul Hunter and Frederick Slack. Check them out at civilizationcontinuity.com. Dot org. Oh, excuse me. I'm uh, giving misinformation yeah, yeah. around misinformation, here. Misinformation, Chuck. <laughs> we know all about you and your blogs, buddy. Anyway, uh, we'll be back in a moment uh, with Roland Deese, uh, the man who sells spirits in a bottle. And I'm not talking about the kind that you drink. He'll be joining us next here on World of the Unexplained. And we're back with Jay Scott and McLovin. McLover, Chuck, McLovin, Chuck, Chuck McLovin, Browder. The, the, I, I don't know. I, th I thought that was funny. What movie is that from? Super bad. Yeah, that's right. That, and it's funny because the, the guy that, that plays uh, the, the, I guess that character looks exactly like uh, a friend of my my brother's from when he was in high school. Really? Yeah. His, his name was was that, his actual name was Aaron Cool. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> but um, he could very easily have been McLover. He had the same, same attitude, uh, same personality, and, and was the spitting image. If I didn't know better, <laughs> you'd say it, it was, it was, that, it, was that, that, it was him. But no, I looked on the credits. It, he's he's not acting in out in Hollywood with those those guys making all those those cool movies. Well, it, it is a uh, it is a rather raunchy film, so I don't recommend it for anyone with a light stomach or high moral. Qualities. Or any, anyone with an aversion to um, um, hand-drawn phalluses. Yes, yes, that would be also, a, yeah. <laughs> no, I'll just leave it at that. I don't want yeah, to put don't any spoilers spoil out there. the plot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, one missed call. I did see that one the other night on Blu-ray. Good stuff. Good so stuff. W w w what you said was a horror flick, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was it was no one I would have ever heard of. No, it's it's a, the cast and crew, it seems, are entirely... Um, you know, or not not really crew, I guess. The, but the cast, I don't really know. I don't. I didn't look at the crew as far as you know. I didn't, no director, you're gonna go. Oh, it's directed by so and so who did such and such, or starring so and so. It's nothing like that. <laughs> you're just like, who are these people? But it was it, it was sort of a. Uh, I guess I know what you did last summer meets 
meets the ring or, or I, something. I didn't say that. You no. Did. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. Uh, that's what <laughs> I extrapolated no, no, it's, from it's, it. It's like you know, it's like the ring in, in the sense that you know, it's a Japanese film that they've taken and Americanized. Americanized. Okay. And so, which means you'll probably see the uh, Japanese film version of it in in a blockbuster near you within the next five weeks, <laughs> like they always do. Can't well, resist why, that. Why is it that the opportunity to capitalize twice? The, the American one is always released first before the the foreign ones finally press the DVD. Yeah, because the American one's better than the foreign. One. That's why. <laughs> I, I would say I would say uh, it's about fifty fifty from what I've seen. Yeah, well, it's just the the, the American one is going to get rented by American viewers. They're not going to rent some Japanese thing. But if they've seen the American version, then they're like, "Oh, that was a great movie. Let's see the original." You know. Yeah, I guess you know I, I guess that's true. I, Americans don't don't aren't really geared that way. Fairly uh, jangoistic. Well, you know, it's just a, you know appealing to the dumbed down American teen well, horror flick and I, going I, culture. I, I'm I'm subject to this too, or, or guilty of it. That uh, occasionally I, I don't like to to watch films in foreign languages because I don't want to read the subtitles, the, all the dialogue for the film. I have no problem, re- you know, watching docudramas or something like that where a segment of the film. You know, has um, what is it? Um, not subtext, but um, uh, not close captioning either. But you, you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't, I can't watch that stuff through an entire. That's, that's why. That's why I, film. I really enjoyed it when they did, um, when they, you know, put the Fighting Tiger, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That's it. Excuse me. When they put that onto a DVD, and they had one of the options was you could select the English speaking track. <laughs> so you could watch it, you know, without having to keep, you know, looking at the bottom of the screen and actually see what's going on. Now, our, our guest, I, I think we're having some trouble getting a hold of our guest tonight. Um, Dee's going to keep trying and I hope you didn't fall in one, the, one of those fight. bottles, man. Yeah, that would be bad. Because <laughs> Chuck had some good stuff for tonight planned. Did I? You did. That's what you told me. What was I going to do? I don't know. Good questions. I, don't, I mean, <laughs> good informative journalistic stuff. I'm Mike Wallace. Oh, gosh. I'm Bernie Shaw. <laughs> Actually, I'm not even sure the two of them ever even worked really together. I'm Morley Safer. <laughs> but yeah, speaking of which, um, celebrities apparently die in, in threes. Last week it was it was Tim Russert, and today I heard uh, unfortunate news, and I'll, I'll have to reiterate it on the, the third rail on, on Wednesday. But I had to play the ticking time clock. It's kind of funny. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the interrupting on all, all, all my eulogizing every I year. am. Go ahead, though. Now, this is something you'd probably be, be uh, interested in. Uh, last night, uh, actor and comedian, satirist George Carlin was found I, I dead. I heard that. Yeah. I heard that. 74? Uh, 71. Time? He did a lot of cocaine, though, and it, it damages your heart. <laughs> really? Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. So figure Chuck, that. I told you about that. I know, <laughs> but um, yeah, prob- probably probably uh, one of the, one of the, the more influential people out there on uh, on uh, probably the way you know I think and uh, I don't know, my my own philosophy. Well, I, I know that you know he's probably the only the only uh, comedian that I know of that's mentioned in the Supreme Court case. Yeah, and I think it was just recently he was he was awarded at the Kennedy Center, I think, a Lifetime Achievement Award. Maybe. Just last weekend, and, and you know, it was it was all of a sudden. I think he, he was still on tour, uh, still working, and uh, you know, just a, just a shock. But uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I wonder who the, who the third is. I, I think that there was another sports broadcaster the week before, an old old school one that that uh, passed away. So maybe that was that was the trio right there. Strange. But I'll have to, I'll have to do a little more uh, Lexus Nexus Google type search and to, to figure that one out. Well, it appears our guest is, is, is not going to come on the show tonight. Oh, I, I guess. I, I love getting stood up by people. <laughs> I really do. I love it. It's great. We're going to have to call him back later and harass him and ask him what he's thinking. Ugh. Oh, well. We will move onward. Onward and upward. Onward and upward. <laughs> oh, man. Isn't that David Icke saying... I don't, I, I, I don't know. I think it is something like onward and upward. Or I've never interviewed Ike, actually. You have, I have haven't yeah. you? Yeah, I did. It was a good interview. We need to have him back. I'd like to have him back. I've got some questions for him about the, about we the have presence. To, we have to pre-record it, though, because it's just... Uh, oh, well, that seems to be the way it is with, with all the, um, the, the uh, well, uh, Europeans. I, I was about to say British, but uh, because of the, the time difference, it, it's, it's just uh, insane to try and get them to do an interview at... Four o'clock in the morning, 
Yeah, I, I agree. No, because I, I've spoken with with a number of, uh, of of well UK bands, and you know usually they're they're open to the idea. Yeah, they just don't want to be up at four. And these, these are rockers, you know, guys used to partying, staying up till eight o'clock in the morning. <laughs> not for not for a radio. But yeah, not 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 to not to promote any anything. I it's guess because they're blitzed by this. Well, I, I imagine it gets pretty incoherent at that point. Well, maybe. And maybe. you know, you you start losing tour dates and you know talking points and all that good stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What we got up there, D? We're, ghost. We're, oh, yeah, ghost in a bottle. We're looking at the at the site right now. Yeah. Um. It's uh, a ghost in a bottle dot com. We didn't get any of these as a promo. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. We didn't. No, I wanted to open one up. Of course you did. <laughs> yeah, right in the studio. Thank you, Chuck. Appreciate that. Well, if our guest was here, I could ask him what would happen. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and he, he tells you, you know, maybe something, maybe nothing. We don't know. But is there a disclaimer on the site? Oh yeah. How many? I would imagine a few. No, there's no, there's this, no disclaimer this, that I. This bottle seen. does not contain your grandmother. <laughs> oh no, we cannot be held responsible for any misfortune to befall you should you take possession of this object. Careful, is, glass is breakable. Now it is. It is not recommended that you break or open the bottle. The intent of this product is for entertainment purposes only. We have had several customers open or break the bottle and contact us, stating that unexplained things have occurred in their homes. And how could this activity be stopped? No, so, I, w- I wonder if um, winging them in the ocean is well, if, is if, permissible. If, if you open or break your bottle, you may experience any or all of the following. A voice out of nowhere. Muffled moans and groans for long periods of time during the day or night. Doors opening or closing slowly. Not fast, but slowly. A feeling that someone is watching, oh, excuse me, following you around your home. The TV volume increasing or decreasing by itself. That would just be annoying. Water left running at the sink. The feeling that someone is watching you. Oh, okay, I was right. I came back down to that. Uh, noises leading into or out of rooms where no one's present. An unfamiliar smell of perfume or cologne. Small items removed. Or, excuse me, moved. Favorite items to move are shoes, car keys, TV remote, and jewelry. Lights coming on or going off by themselves. Electrical appliances coming on by themselves. Sometimes they are not even plugged in. This, this next one is, I think, my favorite. Phone calls. <laughs> yes, yes, they do call. Sometimes they call. <laughs> <laughs> Your nightlight may be turned off during the night. It sounds like that movie you're watching on Blu-ray. It does, man. Phone calls, yeah. Bed covers pulled off you or your pillow may be tossed to the floor during the night. Touches. Light pad on the back. Touch can be warm or cold. Activity usually peaks around 3 a.m. in the morning or on rainy days. Hmm. Isn't that usually when when crime is at its highest, Jay Scott? I don't know. About three a.m. I, I, you don't you don't work on the law, law enforcement. I, I, just, I, I, yeah. just, <laughs> I just get them off. No, I, I uh, you know, yeah, I, 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 no idea, man. No idea at all. But uh, interesting stuff. I think you. St- I, I I must have must have released one of them in here already, man. Stuff's going off all over it's the place. Crazy. We, we got strobe lights going. Seriously, I. Yeah, I, I don't know. I ask you not, listeners. <laughs> why, why would I do that to you? No, there's one that happened around 4 a.m. I don't know. They couldn't fall asleep until 4 a.m. Nevada, Florida. Georgia. These people are from Georgia, everywhere. Yeah, Apple Valley, California. Dear Roland Deese Productions, just like your instructions advised, I believe I have seen all signs of, a, of my ghost. I'm thinking of moving out of my apartment. <laughs> It's now haunted. The ghost Wait, just as your instructions, account. they said not to do it. Yeah, well, you know, you, you can't tell what kind of <laughs> clientele you're going to get, man. You know what I mean? It, it can change. But you get a ghost booklet warnings, a uh, ghost certificate, and a ghost bottle. All three for, I think, $20. Yes, sir. Certificate of authenticity. That's it. That's a bona fide ghost in there. That is. It comes with very important information. Yeah, how much is it? It's twenty dollars, not nineteen ninety nine, folks. Just twenty, twenty. I imagine there's a uh, a an, an appropriate shipping and handling fee as well. Uh, there may be. Uh, I believe you're right. Let's see here. There you, go. you can name your ghost too. Is that yes, right? Sir, you can name your ghost. Ghost is captured from a reported haunted establishment, house, hotel, ship, cemetery, etc. By our ghost hunters. No maintenance required, except occasional dusting. You may. <laughs> You like that, didn't you? You may release the ghost at your own discretion, at your own risk. It is uh, contained mysteriously and is therefore sealed with wax shortly after the ghost is caught. 
The bottle is sealed for your protection. It comes with very important information. We supply the ghost. You supply the name. Um, individual ghost oh, experiences. Oh, okay. Yeah. You yeah. supply the name. Each ghost is unique. So it's like a pet rock or yeah, something Yeah, it, like it comes that. with a ghost certificate signed by the ghost hunter that captures each ghost and engraved with a ghost hunter's seal, with a ghost hunter's seal. Okay. Now, the, do the real ghost hunters catch these things? I, I don't know. Wait, ghost hunters, those are the TAPS guys, right? Yeah, I, I don't think that they're involved no. in this. Okay. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think so. Huh. Well, if they were on, I guess we could ask them. <laughs> yeah, hey, you guys catching these things? Yeah. yeah. What's up? And How again, you... they're, they're not here, and we're, we're sitting here promoting their product. I know, right? Well, what's up with that? <laughs> Maybe they got the time wrong. I'm going to have Mr. J.D. Clements try again here in a little it's, bit. It's possible. I have no idea where that area code is from. but um, it's, 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 it's a Duval County area code, Jacksonville area. Oh, I got it. So it's, it's from your neck be, of the woods. Oh, yeah. It yeah. used to be my, my Okay, area then code. there shouldn't be too much confusion. We're, we're all the same in the, time zone, the same boat here, yeah. Same haunted ship. <laughs> Maybe they're out, they're out catching them. Oh, they're in St. Augustine. Okay, it's just down the road from Jacksonville. Just down the road. So I wonder, how does the wax in the court keep them in there? I just wonder, wonder how they get in there in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's like uh, that Dirty Jobs episode where I saw Mike Rowe um, milking semen out of turkeys. Oh, my God. Yes. I did not want to do, hear do, that. Do you know how they do it? I don't want to know. <laughs> you, you, you don't want I you I thought you were the the farmhand type guy the the, <laughs> the I thought, I, I, Yeah, D, we figured you would just know how this works, you know. Well, I I I'll, I'll tell you even though you, you guys want oh, I've already I've already piqued the listeners curiosity. Yeah, I'm here. sure. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> well, they have this this vial, right? Mm -hmm. Like a glass vial with one piece of like aquarium tubing coming out that's stuck in the um I don't know what it's called. Not the cloaca, but, what, you know, because their plumbing down there is different. <clears throat> but the the one end goes into the, the turkey hole. <laughs> yeah. The other end goes in your mouth. Oh, oh, what? But it's a separate tube that you... comes out of the glass. Oh, okay? Okay. okay? Okay. But there, there's a glass that... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, that, you're that, making that, this I'll, up. I'll, no, I'm not. You are making I'm this not. up. I, 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 I S.U. not, J. Oh, Scott and listeners. Oh, my gosh. But, yes... <laughs> Yeah. And uh, apparently, according to Mike Rowe and the guy he was he was working with there that day, <coughs> occasionally some does come through. Oh my yes. gosh! Oh, yes. you are kidding me. Those guys have to be paid. I, I would hope they're they're being paid um, minimum wage. No, I, I, I would hope it's salary for for. Um, oh my god! What do you do for a living? You don't want to know. You know you don't. What, what do you do for a living? I suck turkeys <laughs> out of a straw. I mean, come on. <laughs> but no, that's my theory on how they get the ghosts in the bottle. No, oh, they plug it into its plumbing and just go away. Uh, yeah. Oh my god! They stick it in the right hole. I, I see. That is that is very disturbing. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, this is just, oh my god! It's gosh. getting better and better, but we're up against a hard break here. Thank God. Um, here at Woe Two, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll be back here in about five. You're listening to World of the Unexplained. All right, we're back here on World of the Unexplained. I'm Chuck Bratter filling in for. Uh, the uh, under the weather, T -dog. Trent Lackey. That's right. Yeah, we we just spoke with with his wife. He is fine, or he will be fine. We think so. Uh, all is good in the Trent world. Yeah. So he he should be back here uh, next Monday with us here very soon. Yeah. And I know you guys so. have missed him. We have. <laughs> oh, no! I and uh, well, we we spoke to. Um, Oh, I, I can't remember his name offhand. Um, in in Nashville. Oh, um, Adam. Adam, there you go, there you go. And uh, he he was he was asking around about about Trent, you know. Yeah, I mean, was just a lot of still bad in the, things. The land of the living. A lot of bad things. A lot of bad luck at one time. Or if he expatriated back to Russia. Yeah, well, you know, we, you know, I, I'd <laughs> probably be wondering the same. Like I said, back, back to Russia. Back to. Russia. <laughs> oh, but he was a little boy. <laughs> Trent Lackey. A wee, a wee Russian child. He was born in in uh, Eastern Siberia. <laughs> he wishes. Uh, that's that's funny. Lost in the the frozen tundra. He made his way to. To civilization in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a job for Trent, man. That, that snow trucker job, ice, ice truckers, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> he likes the weather so much. You know. 
You know, actually, one one I think he he probably could handle um, if he didn't get himself killed <laughs> is uh, have you seen this deadliest catch where where they go and, and oh, fish? Oh, out for like yeah. for the Alaskan or something. King crab? No, 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 they're not out that long. They're, they're out for like. But it's extremely extremely most. dangerous and uh, very stressful. I mean, you're talking about set, like seventy two hour shifts straight. Oh stuff my like gosh. that. Yeah. Did you get paid like a buttload? Well, the the yeah. the crew guys get bonuses for you know X catching amount more ab- fish. above. Well, catching more crabs. But the, the, that's the thing is that Alaskan king crab per pound, um, it, it, it's 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 worth just a ton. It's worth, and more, it's worth, it's worth more than when, when when you see them, you know, bringing these things out of out of the ocean, you know, and, and some of these pots, these these nets they have have a hundred, hundred and fifty. In, in the, I know you love that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Speak and spell. But no, I mean, th- think about the, how the money translates uh, to, to each each one of those, and I've got like a hundred of them just on the line, you know, waiting to bring in. But it's a lot of grueling work, and I, I don't know I've seen some pretty nasty injuries there. You know, guys, you know, getting their their nails smashed in. There was a guy on another boat that I, I don't even think was was being filmed that just happened to be out there. Uh, they they were watching this this guy kind of on the edge. He didn't have a safety harness on. They felt he fell in. Of course, no one on on the ship he was on noticed, but the other ship did. Oh and my god! They got him back on on the on the ship that had the camera crew and everything for Discovery or whatever whatever network it's on. And uh, yeah, the the guy was like, you know, you you saved my life, and he was you could tell he was just he was panicked. Of course, he was, he had hypothermia and all that stuff oh, too sure, from falling into sure. Alaskan uh, ocean waters. <laughs> but yeah, I I think Trent could get along pretty well on. On uh, one one of those Alaskan king crab ships, you know, probably could. Probably you know, could. And he, he's he's definitely uh, got the stature, I think, to 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 hold up to the, you know, the harsh conditions, the harsh harsh work, and all that too. Not to mention, I could kind of see him uh, even doing it old school, throwing out the old line and and bringing it in. <laughs> sort well, of lasso. Well, D-, D has informed me that we have Frederick Slag back on the line. Frederick, are you with us? Yes, I am. Awesome. Well, hey, we we can give you the last. You were talking about uh, the deadliest catch, and that's, that's right the area that, that we're predicting. So it is. And, and I feel sorry for those those fellows. Well, maybe it'll be out of season for them. <laughs> well, I, I, we, we can watch it on reruns, maybe. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you earlier uh, about the, the, this this impact and, and the the fact that that it's up there in, in that area. That the and you had mentioned that 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 the impact will cause problems for the the tectonic plates it just so happens that 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 area there the whole the whole uh, western pacific is uh the the ring of fire that's a it's a, a, a conglomerate of, of several different uh uh i guess tectonic plates it's sort of an epicenter around there that they kind of move around it and it's, it's very volatile do you, do you think that that has some bearing on on some of the uh, visions i guess and catastrophes you, you, you've been seeing well, in your again, dreams i'm not a geologist but i do pay one uh, but uh, yes, I agree with that, and all my discussions with the geologists say that that is a, a very lethal area of potential for shifting and moving. And if indeed uh, a an asteroid uh, comet uh, hits that area, uh, it's definitely going to cause a shift. And again, back to you've seen the. the the string of five balls where somebody takes one on the end and bounces it and how the energy transfers through and comes off the other side right? and and swings the other one out. Uh, That is going to be the reaction. Uh, And it's going to, but it's not going to be smooth like that. Of course, in the middle, it's going to jump out and and, uh, produce uh, uh, all kinds of reactions all the the way across the country. Now, I've got to ask you, um, do you foresee in our future in Arizona Bay? <laughs> <laughs> that could, that's very likely. That's very likely. You haven't seen uh, it firsthand, but but you extrapolated no, I, from. I, I have not. Okay. I have not. Uh, I in in one of my visions of of uh, being in Colorado and uh, obviously up high, mile high. Um, that is one in which I survive, and people are talking about the ocean not being that far away. I don't see it, but I hear about it. 
That's right, listeners. Get buy in to, to, to your ocean Arizona property exactly. now. Your, your Dirt future, cheap. future oceanfront property in Arizona and Colorado, probably Utah as well. We'll start building it up. <laughs> there you go. The price is going to go up. <laughs> now, what, gentlemen, one one of my main reasons for calling back in was to to emphasize to anyone out there who has had dreams or visions to by all means feel free to pass them on to you and have you do the same to me or have them send them to me directly. And I would personally, if they would uh, attach a way for me to get back to them, like to interview them to uh, see where where it fits in our scenario and our mapping and, and graphs. Now, how how much information have you compiled from, from third-party people that, that have had had these visions? Excuse me? How, how much information have you compiled from, from others who, who've had visions, uh, I guess, in, in some of the data you, you've been Quite compiling? Few, but we, we would certainly like to have more. Uh, and, it, again, the message is not so much on what happens to the land, per se, but what happens to the people. Well, and we, we that's, discussed that's this. important. We discussed this uh, last week on a, on another show, Third Third Rail Radio, um, with with a, a, a historian, a Welshman. His his name uh, uh, escapes me as of right now. It was it was Brian? Um, I started with an F. I, Don't I, even I, ask I, me. I can't remember offhand. I think it was called um, uh, Historic Warming. Oh, I, I, I know I, you're talking about. Yeah, that. I know, I and I, I'm name. screwing it all up because. Uh, you know, it was a week ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he was saying, uh, you know, throughout history, you know, you even go back uh, 12,000, 15,000 years, human beings are extremely resourceful, uh, you know, pretty much whatever's handed, well, handed at them. The code in us is, is to survive. Uh, and I think that that is built in all of us. And all we need is the tools to get through that. And once we get through it, to have hopefully had the training to know what to do with it. Um, and that training being everything from how to survive, but biblically, and how to move forward. Because if this is, is indeed uh, the time of revelation, uh, then it's not the end, it's the beginning. Sort of like a, the, the phoenix we're, we're rising from the right. ashes? We're, we're promised a thousand years after that, uh, so that's that's the good news part uh, for those that do well, survive. Yeah, I, I think that's a you know the, the thousand years though that that only comes after the whole Armageddon thing. Now this is this is in the Bible. Yeah, this is okay. in the Bible. Okay. I mean, if if you're following a strict biblical interpretation of events and following that kind of timeline, then that would be after the Antichrist comes, after he establishes his. His kingdom here on earth after Christ comes back down and 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 the battle is on. That's when the thousand years of peace begins. Well, being an engineer, I keep all avenues open. And, uh, <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with that. I I, I like to do the same. I kind of hedge my bets that way. Yeah, absolutely. And be you know back to the Boy Scout days. Be prepared. I'm just saying if if you're gonna if you're gonna say you're basing it on a biblical standard, I mean that that would be the biblical standard. Well, we're basing on biblical standard partially, and well, some of it, from what I saw in the notes as well, uh, scientific fact uh, to parallel the two together precisely. Well, uh, some some of it even dovetailed uh, Nostradamus to some extent, did it not? Certainly. Okay. Well, I mean, and uh, he, there, there he gives a different. That, but uh, Notre Dame is, is so coded and, and hidden, that right. No one can tell. Well, it's, it's extremely cryptic. After after it does happen, and then then you're still guessing. Yeah. <laughs> But no, I, I think I think his his number he threw out there was uh, ten thousand years or something too. So I guess it's exponential. <laughs> so when when is this event going to take place? Can y'all pinpoint a, 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 a you know the next five years, the next year, the next? When when would you like it to happen? Uh, I don't want it to happen at all. Next <laughs> Thursday, I, I've got to go down to the DMV and that day. I would not give you a date for anything in the world. Uh, because I don't know, and you, you certainly don't know. Definitely not, uh, definitely not. No one does. Uh, all we know is, for a fact, this has happened in the past. And for a fact, it will happen again. Uh, we are a target out there, and we are in the crosshairs somewhere along the line, and it, it will happen. Uh, it is cyclical in nature. And we are part of that. We're only a, a minute part of it. But the biggest part.
part that we want to make sure is that people can survive that. So have you worked with with anyone at NASA or any astronomers to pinpoint uh, potential Earth killers out there? We always have our ear, ear to the ground on looking for those types of things. Uh, are we working with anybody in particular right now? No. Okay. I, I just thought maybe, maybe uh, since since you, you were so close with uh, that geologist you were always talking about, maybe you had an astronomer on the side, too. No, I don't have an astronomer, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I do have a couple connections at NASA. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Uh, that's that, that. I'm sure that always comes in handy. Uh, climate well, analysis, all that good stuff. Oh, for, Frederick, we're, we're gonna we're gonna let you have this this last minute here to kind of say what you need to do because we apologize that we let Ron eat up all your time toward the end. Oh no, no problem. Ron loves to talk, and uh, <laughs> God love him. You know, he's got a wonderful gift to do that. But uh, but uh, you know, yeah, we're gonna give you this last minute just to kind of plug plug everything that you want to plug, websites and uh, books and all that good stuff. Well, the book will be coming this fall. Uh, but the the big thing I want to push is that anyone that does have uh, scenarios, dreams, et cetera, that they contact you or myself directly. I would love to have the uh, opportunity to interview them. Um, and the biggest move is to store food and start preparing for the future. The visions are there, and I want people to be able to step in and see those visions to see them the way that we have seen them so that they can get a glimpse of what the potential is out there. Whether they've had them or not, we, we will be putting them in a written form that's very easy to, to follow and understand in hopes of prompting them to protect themselves and their family for the future. Is there a site where, where maybe they could procure the stuff that you would, you would recommend? Yes, we'll we'll have a uh, listing of that coming, but uh, they're mainly going to be procuring a lot of that of their own and storing. And uh, for example, I, I brought up a, a particular family family in the past that uh, is preparing. They are they are storing. They could survive very easily for six months on what's stored alone. But they know how to survive without, they're self-sufficient. And that's what you need to do. Well, right. that's, well definitely uh, let us know when the book is ready, because we want a copy of it, and we definitely want to, uh, in the website too, and uh, we can have you back on for the for a whole show. Definitely, we will. As soon as, as a matter of fact, we're going to be working on a new website, uh, um, a little perhaps less political, uh, that'll be coming out. And as soon as that's available, I'll, I will let you know about that. I'm okay. myself will run. And by all means, you're on, the, uh, you're on the book list. All right, great. Awesome. Thanks so much, Frederick. We appreciate you coming on with us. Gentlemen, I appreciate it. Thank Have a you. wonderful evening. You're the same. And that was Frederick Slack. And um, good stuff, man. Good stuff. So... Um, yeah, and we got like 45 seconds to, to end this thing. So uh, <laughs> this is uh, Jay Scott, your only JD DJ. Well, not, not your only JD. We've got JD Clements here, but, you know. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. But um, anyway, <laughs> uh, we hopefully uh, Trent will be back with us next week here at World of the Unexplained. Mr. Browder? This is Chuck Browder dropping science at you, 64,000 kilobytes. Per second. And Mr. Clements. See you guys next week.